Hello, I'm in the process of resurrecting this 1984 Chevy military pickup truck and because it's a military truck it has a 24 volt starting system and provides 24 volts for uh, special accessories but otherwise it's fundamentally a 12 volt vehicle and because of that hybrid 24 volt 12 volt system it has a peculiar setup for the glow plugs and I wanted to make a video explaining briefly how the glow plug system works. Now on this truck there is one faulty glow plug and I'll show you how to test those and it's also missing a glow plug relay so I have a good used one that we'll install and see if it works. I think it makes the most sense to cover the 24 volt systems and the 12 volt systems separately. This big mess you're looking at here is the official GM wiring diagram for the glow plug system and this diagram is available in one of the military technical manuals that's available online. If you can't find it, let me know. I can find a link to it for you. I'm not going to use this in this video, at least not much. I'm going to draw a simplified diagram that I think is easier for you to understand. What you're looking at here is just the 24 volt part of the glow plug system. This truck has two 12 volt batteries in series. There is a big resistor. This is mounted on the firewall behind the air filter. It goes through a solenoid, which I've been calling the glow plug relay. And from there, it goes to the individual glow plugs, one for each cylinder, of course. This solenoid is activated by a control card. Uh, we'll get into that in the 12 volt circuit. So the 24 volt system is pretty simple. You two batteries in series, through a resistor, solenoid, glow plugs. Now, the glow plugs are actually uh, just plain old 12 volt glow plugs. In fact, they're rated at, usually they're rated at 10.5 volts because there's some voltage drop in the wires going to them. So even though this is a 24 volt system, you still buy 12 volt glow plugs. And that's because of this resistor right here. This resistor drops the voltage from 24 volts here to approximately 12 volts going through the solenoid and the glow plugs. Some people will change this arrangement, they'll get rid of the resistor and just tap off 12 volts right here at this battery and go through the solenoid. Um, I, don't, I don't go into the pros and cons of that. I'm not real familiar with why people do that, but I figure that uh, General Motors had a reason to do it this way and I intend to leave this intact. So let's take a look under the hood of this truck and I'll point out some of the various components that we just talked about on the wiring diagram. The batteries connect over here on the left-hand side. They're both on the left. The battery right down here in front is the one that's connected to chassis ground. And the battery up here on top is the one that goes from 12 to 24 volts. That white block over there is a 24 volt wiring bus. And below it is a ground bus. From that 24 volt bus, you can see a black wire that goes to this box right here on the firewall behind the air cleaner. That box is the resistor. There's actually two resistors in parallel. And out of that box comes a red wire right there. That red wire is the uh, 12 volt supply going to the solenoid. And if there was no load, there'd be 24 volts, but as you apply load, it drops the voltage down appropriately. Just below that, if I can get a look at it with the camera, is an orange wire. That orange wire goes off to the glow plugs. So there's two wires. One wire goes to one side of the engine. One wire goes to the other. And that's the essence of the 24 volt system for glow plugs. So our task right now is to install a solenoid. The new used solenoid is installed. Don't knock my choice of fasteners, that's all I had handy. And the next thing I want to do is clean up these ring terminals. They don't look too bad, but they could use some help. So wire brush works fine. Wire brush on a Dremel works even better. Let's polish those up.
it doesn't matter which terminal goes to which wire or vice versa. Big ones doesn't matter, little ones doesn't matter. It's whatever reaches best. I don't know if this will quite reach over there. Yeah, that's barely. Some of these solenoids have connections top and bottom, and those are a better fit than the ones that are side to side like this. I think that's going to work best. Also put a little bit of grease on those ring terminals. You can use dielectric grease if you want. I'm sure you have a better way to do this than what I'm going to suggest, so I'm not saying this is the only way. I'm not saying it's the best way. But it seems to work for me. Before I tighten down this red wire, I want to take it back off because we have to hook up some smaller wires back here. And I just forgot a wire here that I realized. So before I connect this stuff, let's go back to the wiring diagram and I'll try to explain how the control circuit works for this. Okay, let's look at the 12 volt control circuit. I took the same diagram we had before, but I added a few things to it. The central part of this system is this glow plug control board. It gets 12 volt power. It's tapped off here after one of the batteries through the ignition switch. Board is powered here and that wire continues back down to the solenoid coil. So that has 12 volts on it all the time when the key is on. And the control board is grounded. The control board will apply a ground to the other side of this coil when it wants the solenoid to be active. Have 12 volts here, when it's grounded through the board, the solenoid activates and provides power to all eight glow plugs. This control board does a few things, and I won't go into a lot of detail because you can look at the GM wiring diagram if you want to see all the detail. But it does a few things that are noteworthy. It times the glow plugs so that they're turned on and off for the right amount of time. And one of those inputs is a temperature sensor. The colder the engine is, the longer it turns the glow plugs on for. It also measures the voltage off from this resistor. Resistors limit current. They don't regulate voltage. So this resistor is like a restriction in the line that powers these glow plugs because these need to see about 10 and a half volts. <clears throat> if all these eight glow plugs are all in circuit and all working properly, the resistance of the glow plugs balances with the resistor that's on the firewall and the system works normally. But as if one of these plugs becomes disconnected or it quits working, there's less load on the resistor less current flows through it, but the trade-off is there's more voltage on the glow plug circuit. As there's more voltage for the remaining glow plugs, it puts additional stress on the rest of the glow plugs. And that additional stress can cause them to burn out. So if there wasn't any mechanism to prevent that, one failed plug or two failed plugs could have a cascade failure that takes out all the rest of the glow plugs. So this glow plug control board monitors the voltage after the resistor and when it activates the solenoid it checks that voltage to make sure it's within proper parameters. If that voltage is too high it'll turn the solenoid right back off to protect the rest of the glow plugs. So if you turn the key on and the wait to start light comes on and goes right back out that's one of the things to look at. So now we have those three wires to hook up. These two little guys here go to the smaller terminals on the solenoid. This pink wire is the ignition power. This light blue wire goes back to the control card and that's what activates the solenoid when the control card applies a ground to this light blue wire. This larger orange wire is the voltage sense wire that'll go together with this cable here that goes to the glow plugs. So put that on and put that on and tighten those down. 
Those two wires are hooked up and the voltage sense wire is hooked up underneath here. Now I can reconnect the main power wire. And make sure you take the time to put these boots back over the terminals. So now that the relay is installed, let's take a look at the glow plugs. So you're looking at the driver's side of the engine. I'm going to zoom in down here. And there's one right there. Way down there you can probably see the yellowish colored ring on the rusty stud. That's not a stud, that's the plug. And I've already pulled a couple of them. Those green wires that are dangling down there go to a couple of plugs I pulled. Now you can test these on the engine and that's what I did. I checked all eight of them and I found one that's faulty. But I went ahead and pulled a good one as well as the faulty one so we can take a closer look at them. Here are those glow plugs. The glow plug on the left is one of the good ones, and the glow plug on the right is the faulty one. First thing to look is to see if they're bulged, and they're not. Uh, a bulge is, auto is an automatic failure. But if they look good, then we can take a multimeter set to the ohms resistance scale. And if they're in the engine, you just take your one of your leads and find a good ground on the truck someplace. Or if you have them out like this, just put one of the leads on the body of the glow plug other lead to the terminal, and a good plug is roughly one ohm. If it's in the single digits, it's probably fine. There's a little bit of resistance here and the leads go to the multimeter. So let's say about one ohm, that's good. This plug on the right measures a little more than that. So the higher the number, the greater the resistance and the less current that's going to flow through the plug. Now it's hard to see on camera, but there's a little K after that number. So that's 46K, or 46,000 ohms. Big difference. At 46,000 ohms, so little current is going to flow through this plug that it will never get warm. So this plug is faulty. But this, we'll take a look at it again, about one ohm. This is a good plug. This happens to be an AC13G. AC as in AC Delco. This happens to be a Wellman plug. I'm not going to go into one brand versus the other, but I did notice the seven good plugs on the truck are all AC 13Gs. The one bad one is a Wellman. I, this appears to be older just by the amount of rust and corrosion on it, so I wouldn't be surprised if these seven good plugs are uh, original, and this is one replacement. So apparently the current replacement for an AC 13G is an AC 60G. So that's what I picked up. You can see it there, otherwise it's kind of washed out, but that's an AC60G. One difference I noticed is that the terminal is, is wider. So I could replace the connectors on the truck, or I could maybe cut this down with a saw or a Dremel. I think I'll cut this down instead of replacing the connectors on the truck. Next thing we need to do is test the solenoid, test our wiring, and also make sure the voltage is correct on the glow plugs. See if they're all working and they're all hooked up properly. We can do that pretty easily by taking a clip lead, hooking it up to the light blue wire here on the back, and grounding it while we monitor the voltage on a voltmeter. Okay, here's our test setup. I have the multimeter connected to the big orange wires going to the glow plug, and the black lead is connected to a good ground on the engine. Then I have a clip lead hooked up back here to the light blue wire and it is in my hand. I've hooked up both of the batteries in the truck and the ignition key is turned on. When I ground this lead right here we will see the solenoid activate and we'll see power on the glow plug circuit. 10, 11 volts, looks pretty good. I think our glow plug system is going to work properly. I want to close this video by pointing out a big mistake in one of the wiring diagrams that you might find on the internet. If you look for the military technical manuals for these vehicles, you'll probably find this wiring diagram. 
and it has one major mistake and that is in this voltage monitor line from the glow plug module. Like I mentioned previously, the glow plug module has to monitor the voltage at the glow plugs to protect them but also to know how hot they are because the hotter they get the less current they draw so the voltage rises on the glow plugs and that helps the glow plug module to know how hot the plugs are to know how long to leave them on for. So this is a very important line but in this diagram which is the one you're most likely to find it shows that it is monitoring power from the same side of the relay as the incoming power. So the power comes from the batteries through the resistor on the firewall and then right to the relay. That's correct, but the voltage monitor circuit does not tap off from the same side of the relay. It actually connects to the other side of the relay, the same place where the glow plugs connect. So it is a small orange wire coming from the glow plug module and it goes on the same relay post as the large orange wire going to the glow plugs. There is one diagram I found online that is correct. These are both General Motors wiring diagrams but at one point they must have realized their mistake I guess. And, uh, so this is basically the same diagram. We have the glow plug module here, the relay here, the resistors here, and the glow plugs here. But this diagram is correct. The voltage monitor line comes right up here to the relay which is shown as the same post going to the glow plugs. In this diagram the power comes through the resistors and into the other side of the relay. This is correct. And much earlier in the video when I showed hooking up the orange wire I showed it correct. But this is actually a re-released video replacing an earlier video that I made based on incorrect information from this wiring diagram. So just a note, if you hook it up this way, it does not work. I tried it.